Now for the second part in our series on bushfire recovery, how fire affected communities across the state are working to get their lives back to normal. Communities in the Blue Mountains know all too well the destruction that bushfires can bring. They've endured two major emergencies in just six years. Jeremy Fernandez is in Katoomba and he joins us now. Jeremy, you've spent the day talking to locals. After everything they've been through, I, I guess at least they're happy to see this rain. They are thrilled to see the rain, Juanita. It's really quite incredible for a community that just a few weeks ago was staring down that Gospers Mountain mega fire that destroyed homes, businesses and tore through about 400,000 hectares of bush and forest. The community of Bilpin, about 30 kilometres from Katoomba, was one of the worst affected. They've seen a huge outpouring of support, not just from people in New South Wales, but interstate and internationally as well. Uh, however, local businesses there say the recovery process is going to be expensive and it's likely to take years before they're back up and running at full capacity. Our reporter Lydia Feng has met some of those people who've been affected. The hills around Bilpin are scarred by a summer lost to fires. Outside Lionel Bucket's luxury cabins, what was once a picturesque view, now a stark reminder of what he endured. It was a bit like Armageddon coming. It was a huge firestorm. On December the 15th, flames came roaring through his property. This is the dream cabin. Remarkably, all his cabins were saved, but they've largely stood empty with very few bookings since the fires. Usually this is peak period, usually we're booked all year round. So it, it's, a big, it's a big hit, so the cash flow's gone. A loss to his business means others like tour operator Jock and Spencer are suffering too. We'd estimate probably um, a third of our customers that go on the glowworm tours are actually guests staying in the cabins. So you can imagine suddenly, if there's no guests, that's, that's a huge chunk of customers that we're not getting anymore. It's not going to be easy to make something out of them. Down the road, self-employed builder John Knowles is also hurting financially. He lost around $25,000 worth of tools when his shed went up in flames. Generally, I've uh, been caused to be a bit unemployable by the burning of my tools. So far, he's received little financial assistance and this week, John and a group of Bilpin business owners went to Canberra, calling on the government to do more to help. It would be really useful right now if I could replace the critical tools that I've lost, because then I could get back earning money and start functioning as a normal member of society again. Fortunately, some have received government grants, like fruit grower Sean Lonergan. It's helped begin the recovery process on his 25-acre orchard. Just got to clean up, replace all the irrigation. There's plenty of work to do, but there won't be any income. Many of these apple trees are so badly damaged they'll have to be replanted. And it could take several years before this orchard again bears fruit and the business is thriving. All Despite the, the loss, Sean is determined uh, to focus on the positives. I heard there a live bird running around there yesterday and I've actually taken, there's a water dragons on the dam out back there. And it's just amazing how those sort of animals have survived. A community staying optimistic as they work to rebuild and recover. Lydia Feng, ABC News, Bilpin. Now the regeneration on either side of the Bells line of road is taking place as we speak, despite that bush being burnt out just a few weeks ago. Uh, it's symbolic for a lot of locals who are looking ahead on their road to recovery. All around the Mount Toma Botanic Gardens, black stumps are sprouting new shoots. See, this area was really intensely burnt. But... Greg Burke is the curator who defended his own home during this mega fire. The flames in my street were 70 metres high, so more than twice the height of the, the trees, and that is something I've never seen before. He also helped protect the 6,000 or so ornamental species here. Well, as you can see from these plants, the fire got inside the fence. Um, but we've been really fortunate that some of our large trees, like this coastal redwood from California, have survived unscathed. And he says the garden's native bushland is already slowly rebounding. Now, what are we looking at here? What's the orange stuff? The orange stuff is, is one of those slime moulds that's fire dependent. So 
after the fire comes through, these take off really rapidly. It breaks down the nutrients and the seed from the eucalypts uh, and all these seedlings germinate and take off. But there are limits to the recovery. Brett Summerall leads a scientific team that defends wild ecosystems from exotic weeds and diseases. More frequent, more intense fires makes it much more difficult for these types of, types of ecosystem to recover from things like drought. So we do need to do everything that we can to, to protect them and restore them. You are seeing our famous Wallamai pine. It's a, a weird tree. International tourists are also returning. We've seen some of the devastation, um, but we're also seeing some of the rebirth. It's amazing how some of these trees are able to bounce back. Fresh regrowth is also encouraging locals. For all of us that live up here, you can get quite flattened by seeing the black every day, but equally seeing the green is something we're all looking out for now. Tessa McLaughlin nearly lost her family's cider shed. She's been overwhelmed by the generosity of tourists. There are areas that have been burnt, but there are also areas that haven't been burnt. So you can still go on a bushwalk and see the same beautiful scenery that you want to see. There are fantastic restaurants that, that look the same as they do normally. A lot of the bed and breakfasts are doing special rates at the moment. So it's a really fantastic time to not only see the Blue Mountains, probably get a few bargains, but also support the communities as well. Now, as Tess was saying there just a moment ago, those communities that haven't been directly affected by the fires are also feeling the hurt from this bushfire season. I'd like to introduce you to Dan Lewis, who's a tour operator in Katoomba. Dan, what's business been like since the bushfire season began? It's been really grim, Jeremy. Um, during the fires, of course, all the natural areas here where we usually take people to canyon and climb and bushwalk were shut. Now, a lot of those open areas have reopened, they're not burnt, but uh, the people haven't come back. There's obviously some kind of reputational damage that's been done when people think of fires in the Blue Mountains, that it, perhaps they think it, it's happened everywhere. Yeah, obviously there's a perception that pretty much the entire Blue Mountains is a blackened mess, um, but there is still a lot of beautiful areas that are unburnt, they're open again, and we can take people canyoning, climbing, walking, um, and you can really enjoy a beautiful experience here still. It's been quite tough on businesses here. Absolutely. Um, people just haven't turned up, uh, even though they've been invited to come back. And uh, I'd like to say thanks to the ABC for having, to letting us invite people back. But um, yeah, it's been really hard, particularly in my profession where the guiding community, everyone's a casual. So when people don't come and book trips with us, people don't get any work and they don't get any income. And businesses are sort of banding together, aren't they, to work out how to move forward through this difficult period? Yeah, there's been some community meetings um, with local government, state and federal government. And um, yeah, for example, um, people have been given rent holidays. Um, we've got a project coming up that's called Blue Mountains Adventure Aid, where we're trying to raise awareness that the Blue Mountains is open again, and also raise some money to um, rehabilitate all our wild areas. So we're going to be, last weekend in February, we're going to be taking people um, on adventures up here. And it's businesses volunteering their time to do that, to, to lure people back up Absolutely. Here. The yeah. guides and the businesses that employ us, we're all going to volunteer our, our time and our resources, and um, hopefully we can make it a great weekend. Dan, best of luck with that. Good to meet you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, now, there are more stories like that of communities in the Blue Mountains that have been affected by the fires. You'll find more stories like, just like that on our website at abc.net.au. Uh, and also, uh, as we mentioned, this is part of our special series where we're checking in with communities that have been affected by the bushfires. Next week, we head to Eden, which is another community that's born more than its fair share this uh, bushfire season. That's coming up next week on ABC Local Radio, ABC News and online. But for now, that's all from Katoomba.